you guys know the first segment now for this podcast what i try to do is um answer listener questions and i have a question for mr big 10 he actually commented on an episode he didn't write in um, but he commented on an episode on youtube episode 13 which was the discussion with the ex-hebrew israelite andrew garcia this is actually the most listened to uh, podcast to date with over eleven thousand views and counting so please pray that god will continue to lead black hebrew israelites to that video and that they will would uh, turn to the truth and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and repent and to trust in the gospel. But Mr. Big Ten asked for me to show the Trinity in the Bible. And what I did was refer him to episodes that I've done already. I told him to just scroll through the page and he'll be able to see those episodes. By the way, uh, those episodes are episode 14 and 15. Um, but um, what he said after that was no one has been able to show him in scripture where it actually claims that one has to believe in the Trinity in order to be saved. Now, I personally wouldn't word it that way. And I don't know most people who would, but I think I get the question. So I'm going to give two main reasons why I believe it is essential for the Christian to believe in the Trinity. Um, as I already mentioned, I've done episodes on this, so I'll give a sort of an outline kind of a response to this. But before I give these two reasons, I think it's important for me to define the Trinity once again. And the definition that I love to use for the Trinity is within the one being that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so what you have there are three foundations for a biblical understanding of the Trinity. The first foundation is monotheism, that there is only one God being. There is only one God, not multiple gods. You have one God being. The second foundation of the Trinity is there are three divine persons that make up the one God being. And then you also have the third foundation, which is these persons are co-equal and co-eternal. Um, and so on to my two reasons why the Trinity is an essential doctrine that the Christian um, must believe. Um, one is that God is triune. We're talking about the very nature of God himself. And so that would make it essential just on the surface, just on the face of it. And so one of these things that we actually look at as far as what has God done in scripture is well we see that God is the one who created and the scripture actually says that God created by himself um, you actually see that in Isaiah 44 24 which says thus says the Lord your Redeemer who formed you from the womb I am the Lord who made all things who alone alone right <laughs> who alone stretched out the heavens who spread out the earth how by myself however what you see in Genesis and in many other scriptures, but let's just look at Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. We find some interesting information about the one true God. It says in verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, right? Let us make man in our image after our likeness <laughs> and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God made man in his own image in the image of God. He created him male and female. He created them. If we look at Psalm chapter 104, verse 30, it says, when you send forth your spirit, they are created. <laughs> when the spirit is sent forth, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. Perhaps this is why maybe Job says in Job chapter 33, verse 4, the spirit of God has made me. <laughs> The spirit of God has made me and the breath of the almighty gives me life. Um, you also have tons of verses. John chapter one, Corinthians or uh, Colossians chapter one, Hebrews chapter one, which all attribute creation to the father. No, <laughs> to the spirit. Like the other verses. No, it, it actually attributes creation to Jesus. Nothing was made without him. Everything was made for him. And it's Jesus who sustains it all. And so the question is, did God create all things by himself? Well, according to scripture, as we read in Isaiah 44, 24, that's what it says, that he created these things by himself, that it was him alone who did this, right? Not to mention the opening of our Bibles in Genesis chapter one, verse one, it says, in the beginning, God created 
the heavens and the earth. And so these things were created by God. Um, again, Isaiah 44, 24 says it was him by himself. And so how do we explain these other texts, right? Did the spirit of God assist God in creation? We have to say yes, as we read in the other verses, right? When he sends forth his spirit, they are created. Um, John chapter one says not one thing was created um, there wasn't one thing that was created apart from Jesus. There was nothing that was created that Jesus did not create. And so the conclusion is creation is a work of God alone, right? The God who created is the God of the Bible. According to scripture, creation was accomplished by the father, the son, and the spirit. Therefore, the God of the Bible must be triune or we have a major contradiction on our hands. But Trinitarians don't have a problem harmonizing these verses. Now, I will say that you can be ignorant of many details about God. None of us understand God perfectly. We don't know him exhaustively. Um, even we don't have a perfect understanding and comprehension of what it even means for God to be triune in the perfect sense. Um, you're not required to define the Trinity in order to be saved. Um, however, the problem is in denying the Trinity. You cannot deny the Trinity and consider yourself a Christian or a believer in the God of the Bible because if you deny the Trinity, you have denied the the God of creation. Now, the second thing I'll say quickly is salvation is a Trinitarian work. Therefore, man cannot be saved apart from the Trinity. Um, salvation finds its origin in the Father because it's the Father who elects. It's the Father who predestines for salvation. Um, salvation finds its accomplishment in the son because it's the son who stood in our place it's the son who lived out our righteousness it's the son who took the wrath of god for all of those who the father elected and salvation's application is brought about by the spirit of god because it's through his spirit that we are born again it's through the spirit that we even know and we're taught of who jesus is in our heart it's the spirit that gives us a heart of flesh after taking out the heart of stone right and it's only by the spirit of god the scripture says we we can even confess that Jesus is Lord. And so the conclusion is salvation is a Trinitarian action on the part of God. So no, you cannot deny the Trinity without denying God. You cannot deny the Trinity without denying the source of your salvation, which is why we can't act as if this is not an important issue right this is not something we can agree to disagree on as i've said in prior episodes this is grounds for labeling someone as a false teacher because they're worshiping a different god <laughs> whether they know it or not i hope this answer is helpful for you go ahead and check out episodes 14 and 15 if you want to dig a little deeper